Hola Florida, introducing Boricua Beer in Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. Hola Florida, introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. Mira, ¿dónde tú estás? Ya estoy aquí, mi vida. Ay. ¿Pero qué están tomando? ¿Pero por qué? Porque me traje lo nuevo y diferente. Taino Light Boricua Beer. Y lo más importante es que es lo nuevo y acabadita de salir al mercado. Y saben buenas. Claro, ambas cervezas tienen los mismos beneficios que una copa de vino. Con menos calorías. La Boricua Beer, 6%. Fuerte, pero con sabor. Y la Taino Light, 4.5%. Y es artesanal. Es Somos familia. Calidad y sabor. Visita boricuabeer.com. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother? Her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425. Galen, cheers to that. What a terrific idea. Now. It is the kind of weekend where an ice cold beverage is probably the thing you want. A local businessman launching his own craft beer company and he's targeting Hispanic customers. He's at the Sentinel today to tell us more about this new beer, Caitlin. Yeah, so actually you took the words out of my mouth, Andrea. I was thinking whether uh, a nice weekend means maybe a nice cold brewski. And I actually have Kyle Arnold, who's our restaurant and retail reporter in-house. And Kyle, you know, craft beer is a trend, but it seems that we have a, one local brewer taking it to sort of the next step. And I let's talk about uh, Boricua craft beer and Taino beer, which is like sort of its lighter sister beer. So talk to me about those two products. Yeah, exactly. It was a beer that was launched here a couple months months ago by a local company at Altamont Springs. Uh, Danny Ramos is running it. It's being uh, produced up in Cape Canaveral at Florida Beer Company. Uh, and it is a beer that is, you know, hoping the Boricua name means Puerto Rican. Uh, there's a huge population of Puerto Ricans here hoping that he can, uh, you know, create a connection between those people to uh, get his name out. Um, so uh, when I think of craft beer, you know, I think uh, it, it certainly targets a, a specific audience, but he's taking it a step further. Can you elaborate more on why target the Hispanic population? Yeah, there's uh, like 500,000 Hispanics in this area. Two hundred, sure. About half of those are Puerto Ricans. And a lot of Puerto Ricans and a lot of Hispanics are in that millennial age group, just like the rest of the country. And those people are kind of disregarding the, uh, the beers their parents grew up with. And they want local beers. They want things that cater a little bit more to their taste, a little bit higher quality, and they're willing to pay for it. Sure, and so where locally can we find this? Uh, there's a couple publics around town in some of the bigger Hispanic pockets of town. Mm -hmm. Sedano's, Bravo's, there's a bunch of 7-Elevens. You can find them almost at all the ABC uh, Wine and Spirits. They have a pretty big craft beer selection. Excellent. And so I know uh, it doesn't, this isn't the only uh, brewery or brewer looking to target this market. Who else is popping up you know, nationally? Yeah, there's some companies out of like Southern California, like Ohana Brewing. Um, there's some other ones. What's really interesting about Boricua is I really haven't found many other 
factors that target Hispanics specifically. And you already see that done in the mass beer market with Corona, exactly. uh, Dos Equis things. Uh, you know, Mexico is a pretty big beer market. Um, but uh, as in terms of Americans, they've really kept it general so far, either uh, localities like Orlando Brewing or, or Fat Tire, just mm -hmm. a generic term out of uh, Colorado. Excellent. And I just want to know, what has the reception been? If it's only been launched for a few months, what are what's the kind of feedback you're getting on this? It's doing pretty well in some restaurants around town, um, especially some uh, like Puerto Rican restaurants that they really only offer, you know, some of the big international beers, uh, Heineken and things like that. They bring in a local beer. It says Craft Brew. Uh, it's got a local tie to it. And people want to try it, especially tourists from out of town. They want to, you know, see what the local flavor is. And, and so far, it's it's been good. Excellent. So we have a local entrepreneur, a local, a local brewer here uh, targeting a very specific market uh, within a larger market. So we'll just have to see how Boricua goes from here. But, you know, if we're seeing all these temperatures, I myself might crack one this weekend. <laughs> I think you should, Caitlin. Cheers to that. What a terrific idea. Cheers. All right. Thanks for watching this video. You can watch Orlando News Now every weekday on OrlandoSentinel.com. We go live at noon. See you then. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out TV. As is our custom, uh, you know we talk politics and we have an opening segment where we have a panel and I'm being joined, joined tonight by Greg Perkins, Tatiana, forgive me what your last name? Serrano. The Serrano and Bill Garlington, uh, who is an associate uh, with us, uh, a contributor. Um, a lot of things happening, guys. Uh, politics, of course, and uh, starting with the campaigns. A new thing that's starting out there, we have a new player uh, in the Republican Party that's coming out to play. Uh, his name, as far as I understand, is a Evan McMillan. You guys go for it. Anybody comment on him? Who, who do, what do you think about him? What do you think about uh, entry of a guy this late in the race? Bill? Uh, I'm not familiar with Evan McMillan. Okay. Oh, he's an ex-CIA agent. Why, why don't you guys just give up now, man? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> they have a, uh, a, 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 a faction of the Republican Party, so they bring they bring this guy Evan McMillan, and he's going to run. But I think he's only going to be eligible in about 30 states. He's from right. Utah, okay? And they these guys are so anti-Trump. They're saying we just don't want this guy to win at this point. Okay. So that he's going to siphon off additional votes. Because right now, Trump and Hillary are tied in Utah, and Utah is always a Republican. Well, there, b before this gentleman was uh, given to me just now, yeah. I knew of four people, the Green Party, mm -hmm. and the Libertarian right. Party, uh, and then the Democratic Party, and the Republican right. Party. No, this guy is, is an ex-CIA. Uh, ex Okay, which would be interesting. Well, the, the the two other people that are third parties, they're right. going to be on the ballot of all fifty states, if I'm not mistaken. If they reach, I think it's, they have to reach a minimum of sixteen percent. No, eight, I think it's fifteen percent to get on the, the debate stage. Mm. The debate they stage. may they may tweak that down to ten percent. Johnson's okay. running at eight percent. The lady's running at four percent. Right. And um, so I've not heard about this person, but. Again, no third party candidates ever won okay. the White House. That's not what they're doing. Yeah, no, he's stopping Trump, yeah. according to Mr. Perkins. Well, right now the country seems to be, um, they don't like anybody at this point. And right. we didn't have a, that, that special person to come in. So are we wrong as citizens, what's going on, or are we just settling? We're not settling. I, mean, I think Hillary, actually, when I looked at her story, I thought she was a pretty nice person. Because all of her, a lot of her work was done helping poor people, which I like, okay. Now, granted, they have become quite wealthy, which is the American dream. Can't fault anybody for that. Right. She needs to stop messing around and just say, hey, you know what, with the emails, I'm sorry, I should not have done it. Stop trying to parse it, right? right. So, I, I mean, I like Hillary. I don't, I like Obama more, okay. but I think Hillary's a nice person. Tatiana, she's trying to she appeal to nice. women, okay, <clears throat> and women voters is, is is she reaching it? Because remember, she reached for the, what, the glass ceiling before and didn't, didn't quite make it because of uh, President Obama. Is she breaking the glass ceiling now? Um, from what it seems like, yes, she is. But I'm sure that all Americans are in doubt about our candidates. Yeah, so are you excited that. about the first woman, <laughs> President of the United States? I am. I mean, as a woman, yes, right. of course, right. I am excited. But I also want the correct woman to become She's not president. running that. Uh, <laughs> I did not say that. She's just not convincing me. 
Okay. Personally. So you can vote Neither Trump? is Trump. Neither is Trump. Okay. So at this so point. So the jury's still out for you. Correct. Okay. Bill, economic packages are being uh, put out there by both candidates. Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Trump has an idea of a package that we previously talked about off off camera about 15 percent. And give me a little insight about what you what you were talking about. I, well, first of all, he does he wants to eliminate the debt tax. Okay. He he wants he wants the the corporations to. To pay their fair share, meaning he would take away the loopholes of the corporations, i.e., Google, Yahoo, uh, these big corp GE that don't pay any income tax whatsoever. Right. The people that are in the hedge funds to the 15%, like the Warren Buffetts of the world, mm -hmm. they pay 15% of their income to the federal government, where I pay 35% because I'm on the federal, uh, the, uh, right. we need to change that. the dole. Right. So that's what it was brought up eight years or, uh, eight or four years ago that, you know, the secretary was paying more money than Warren Buffett. Right. Well, that's what he's trying Percentage, to do. Percentage, not money. Per A higher percent. Well, we're hi paying higher percentage, but again, 15% right. in versus 35%. The Warren Buffetts of the world should be paying their fair share, and they're not. Okay. And I believe Donald Trump wants to change that. Okay, Greg, uh, Hillary has uh, said that she wanted to tax off offshore uh, accounts. She, she should. I mean, so come, come on. How, how are you going to make your money off right. the American people mm -hmm. and then take all your money and park it in a foreign country? Okay, I mean, okay. that's exploiting people. Come on, you're going to make your money here and then take it to Colombia. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, but, but Donald Trump is trying to, if people go overseas, he wants to increase the tariffs. Right. So if they do trade back and forth, what Hillary Clinton's doing is a one-time Charlie of right. taxing these folks. You, you don't want to do leave tariffs, it, man. That's well, war. Let tariff me finish. War. But right. if you, if I'm a company that goes overseas and, and the federal government right. charges me 5% one-time Charlie, that's fine. I just won't deal with the the America anymore. No, I think they, I, I think I, I've heard Trump and I actually agree slightly with this is that he wants to charge them period and if you want to come back you still got to pay you know regardless correct of, you're not going to do business with the United States correct. if you're or if you've left it okay correct. so um, Donald Trump has uh, kind of poo-hooed women in, in a lot of ways <laughs> he's talked very derogatory he's indicated to some news persons that they they bleed from different areas of their body and stuff like that he's called women pigs and he is, is this a kind of candidate that you think women will follow? Absolutely not. Like a man that, you know, Well, you said you weren't sure. About, just now you just said you weren't sure. So you, you may vote for him despite him no. saying these things. Despite him saying that, I would never vote for him. Okay. No. All right. No matter what he says. I mean, he's been saying a lot of things. He's been saying that he wants to the wall right. between Mexico and the U.S. Now he's saying that he just wants to suspend it from terror terrorist yeah. states. Well, let's, let's put it out there a little bit for, for the country. whole for, for the whole group here. He has been self-destructing for about two weeks now. What do you think he needs to do to turn his uh, his, his campaign around? There isn't anything the guy can do. He, he's just not a very serious candidate. Well, he's not I, a serious. I, I disagree. To, to answer your question, what he needs to do is what he's been doing the last couple of days. Right. He's been reading off either the teleprompter or he, and, or he's been literally reading, or he's been reading prepared notes yes. that literally. he pulled out the other day okay. that he endorsed uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. Reluctantly, it looked like he was under duress. I kid, I kid you not. When he read it, he goes, "I don't, 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 word for word." Well, I mean, it's like let me let me let, shoot. Me. Let, let, let's let's put it this way. Yeah. Most politicians will endorse people that they don't like or dislike. It was okay. Hillary and, and uh, Obama, back, you know, four, yeah. four or eight years ago. Yeah. It, Donald Trump is not a politician. The one thing that people love about Donald Trump yeah. is he says what he says, yeah. but he's not doing the political game. And so now he is. So to your point, I agree. I don't think he really wants to endorse John McCain. I really don't think he gives two hoots about Senator right. uh, Speaker Paul Ryan. But he's also said some very negative things about veterans. He, he says, well, for example, with, with uh, Kane, that he doesn't consider him a hero because... That's not what he said. Yes, he did. Well, yes, okay. he did. May, may I? Okay. okay, go ahead. Oh, you mean McCain or... I, McCain, I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, McCain. McCain. 
Okay, he said that on the stump, which right. and he did. He basically right. said people that get captured or are not, not heroes. heroes. That's right. Disagree with him, what okay. you know, hundred percent as a Republican, as a conservative, okay. he shouldn't have said that. But what we love about the man, but what scares us on the other hand right. is he's a wild card. That's but what we love about him, but that's an issue. he's real, he's not phony but belonging that's like an Hillary issue, Clinton. a wild card, because this is a very serious business, President of the United States. Switching subjects real quick, we've got about two minutes, the Olympics. Okay, a lot of great things going on. Give me your hi your highlights or lowlights. You know, I used to love the Olympics, but now I just saw a report this weekend. The IOC in their list of things that they want, high-end hotels, right. access, all the, 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 the restaurants. And then I saw there were people in Brazil who were poor people, right? Yeah, they, they were being removed from their homes, right. so they could have these sure. menus. Yeah. I'm all for that. I don't know that you have to. Tatiana? On, man. Yeah. Something Talk that you've seen, high lows. No, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's it's like, crazy. You know why go make the people in Brazil go through this? Okay. Go through these things to William? make them uh, happen. Some of the the highs are the the uh, the American gymnastics team. I Absolutely. think that's. But one of the things I don't like about the Olympics is it, it, when I was growing up, it was pure athletics of of uh, amateur. Okay. Uh, I know we had to keep up with the third world countries like Russia and all that, uh, yeah. or superpower countries. Uh, professionals. And so we had to bring in professionals. Yeah. It's kind of dumbed down the Olympics, and then it gets back to you know Brazil being okay. uh, the sludge hub. That's because all that money went to the government. Okay. Yeah. On that note, guys, thank you. For, for having the panel and hanging out with us, okay? Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us. I'm Jose Miranda. This has been Hispanic Speak Out TV. We'll see you again next week, same time. Hola, Florida. Introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers. Enjoy responsibly. Mira, ¿dónde tú estás? Ya estoy aquí, mi vida. Ay. ¿Pero qué están tomando? ¿Pero por qué? Porque me traje lo nuevo y diferente. Taino Light Boricua Beer. Y lo más importante es que es lo nuevo y acabadita de salir al mercado. ¿Y saben buenas? Claro, ambas cervezas tienen los mismos beneficios que una copa de vino. Con menos calorías. La Boricua Beer, 6%. Fuerte, pero con sabor. Y la Taino Light, 4.5%. Y es artesanal. Es verdad. Somos familia. Calidad y sabor. Visita boricuabeer.com. I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother? Her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425. Hola Florida, introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda, and this is Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you each week on Bright House Channel 49. Uh, we have three shows. We have uh, Latino Role Model, which comes after me, and uh, we have uh, EDU TV with Greg Perkins. So watch the shows. They're really great and interesting. Um, of course, you know we talk politics. Uh, we talk education. We talk community stuff. We talk culture stuff. Uh, a lot of things happening in the world um, uh, that are scary, and we also have the Olympics that are running now as well. So um, there's a, a lot of interesting things. I'm being joined tonight uh, by a guy I like to c uh, call a friend. He's, he's hasn't arrested me or anything like that, <laughs> but you know, his, his name is, yes. is Sheriff Bob Hansel. How are you, my friend? Nice seeing you again. Uh, my pleasure. Um, Robert, I wanted you to, to come up. I've been, been trying to get past that young lady over there like for a while to get to you, okay? So just let you know. Um, You've had so much time in the office. I wanted to get your views on the changing world around us, you know, society-wise as well. I mean, you worked yourself through up through the ranks, mm -hmm. okay? So you've been, not only have you seen the change, but you are the change. So 
tell me, how's it been? How's this run been for you? Uh, it's uh, I could think of no other career that I would would have enjoyed any more than I enjoyed my 40 years at the sheriff's office. I, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of changes not only in law enforcement but in our community itself. Mm -hmm. uh, going from you know Osceola County, mostly agriculture uh, base county to a to a very di diverse population, a very diverse economic uh, county. So uh, those changes will prop, you probably would see that in three or four lifetimes, in, but I'm, I've saw it in my lifetime sure. because it's been so dynamic, the changes have been. Law enforcement is, has improved leaps and bounds since I started in 76, whether it's equipment, technology, uh, training, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's grown into the professional organizations it, it's supposed to be and, okay. and there's been gr great improvements in law enforcement. Because your community is so diverse, yeah. um, how are you going about incorporating that diversity? Because you have a lot of Hispanics uh, and other cultures in there. Right. How are you going about to recruit them? And things? Well, we do we do recruiting fairs, we do job fairs, not only for law enforcement, but uh, I can give you an example. We have some upcoming um, uh, recruiting fairs for communications operators because we're very we're very uh, it's very challenging to hire communications officers. It seems like that that uh, those that we do hire seem to rotate out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. It's a stressful job, and a lot of people can't do it. So we are always trying to recruit the best possible candidates for that, and taking in mind the makeup of our community also. Uh, you know, we've, we've, we've started doing uh, sponsorships for academies to, to cadets that come in that want to work in law enforcement that have a, have a desire to go to the academy, and then we would, uh, we would sponsor them and hire them on. And we look at, uh, look at those p individuals as they apply. And, uh, and we, like I said, we take the best of the, the candidates that come through, looking back at what we need to fill and how we need to start working and have been working towards reflecting our community. You encourage your officers to continue training and to participate in the community, don't you? Absolutely, because number one, if you don't have contact with the community, you've lost yourself as a, as a law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. You have to be involved because you are the community. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a us against them or us and them. Uh, we are them. And so uh, we, tr we encourage them to continue to train, to t continue to educate. We have an educational reimbursement program that we do. And uh, we are constantly training to improve ourselves. And in that, in that way, uh, it um, improves our chances of something horrific happening sure. uh, that we've seen throughout this nation. And so uh, trained, educated officers uh, are, are, are a great dynamic for our sheriff's office. I want to ask you something about the dynamics of police work, uh, and um, because I've always felt that in life, with, especially with police and, and, and um, the civilians, that there's a pendulum that swings back and forth. And when it swings one way, we get hurt. When it swings the other way, we don't get hurt. Um, lately, it would seem that policing has, has become a very strong subject, and of uh, the individuals who wear the stars or the badges, and in some cases we've not chosen well or wisely in our tactics, in police tactics. How do you address that, even your size of the department, how do you address that so you don't become a victim to everything else that seems to be going on in the system? Well, I think, I think we've you know, just answered that question. Uh, training, make sure that people are acting uh, re, you know, acting or reacting with training, not emotions. Uh, a lot of times when you find yourself in trouble, uh, you're reacting on emotions and not the training that mm -hmm. you've been given. Plus investment in the community. Um, we're not perfect, so we know that things can go wrong. Right. But if you have a strong bond with your community and in, in an involvement in your community, uh, it's, it, it doesn't create that much of a, of a problem when it's explained that what we try to do and how we try to do it. Mm -hmm. And being open to your community, trying to get, the, get them involved in law enforcement and <coughs> us involved in them. So uh, those, those two things right there do, to, do, the, do the most for lessening an impact from a, from a negative. What about the psychological thing? I mean, because most departments, once you pass your psych the first time, you don't really see anybody unless you shoot somebody. Okay, so should we be going to a mode now where we check guys out like once a year or so? 
Well, and, and there's there's training in that too. Our supervisors and their supervisors, and it's right up the line, mm. are trained to recognize people who are stressed, who have who have changed uh, their behavior patterns. They're trained to recognize that, and they train to. And we have a very very <coughs> uh, vigorous employee assistance program EAP, and uh, we utilize that when we find a. A employee, whether it's a, a member of our agency, whether it's sworn or non-sworn, that mm -hmm. has a that has has changed in some way or is starting to uh, may be having problems. So we we reach out to them and make sure they get the help they need, and that in turn may prevent a uh, uh, event later on. Uh, plus, we track we track things like our use of force. If if we okay. see that use of force is is not being handled in a proper way by a certain individual or certain squad or something something of that nature and we and we track that through our internal affairs unit. Okay. I, I don't know how, any other way to put this, but white guys don't necessarily hang out with minorities, that, okay? Or they grow up in sections where they're just white people or they're just black people. How do you train or get guys from both sides and even Hispanics or whatever other thing to kind of get outside that box so they realize that a white guy is not necessarily a bad guy, and the black guy is not necessarily the bad guy. How do you how do you go about that? Well, that that's a training issue, and yes, each everybody in our community has grown because up that's a hot topic. Now. Yeah, it okay, is, so. and and we you know we train with uh, uh, human diversity training. Okay. How uh, uh, we we try to interact with different cultures, different races. Uh, plus, this this is a melting pot now. We're we're kind of we're kind of all in the same group together now. Mm -hmm. You know, when me and you were younger, there was definite separation of, right. of populations. Mm -hmm. And uh, those days are slowly melting away. I mean, it's... But we still have them. Yeah, we do. Okay. And, and so how, how we train, because it seems like I'm really harping on training, but no, that, I mean, that's, it's what, important. You, that's what you that's need, going that's on. What you need yeah. to, to make sure that you give every effort, whether it's the whether it's the, the communications officer, the deputy sheriff, the records clerk, that that person uh, is sensitive to the needs of everyone, right. no matter what they are or, or, or where they grew up or what language they speak, that they everyone is treated the same way, right. and that and that comes through a a, a, a bona fide training process. And I'm not and I'm not, I'm not trying to harp on that, but right. but we see so many bad things going on, you know, poor judgment, really poor judgment, that I'm not even sure the supervisors are on top of any well, of that and, and, it's, and it's difficult uh, sometimes when a, when a catastrophic, catastrophic mistake is made to recover from it if you haven't laid the groundwork out, whether it's community involvement, whether it's training. You haven't had that where, where the impact is lessened. So, um, you know, we know that, especially in law enforcement, especially now when, when you can get out of your car and you're on video somewhere and somehow. And so, so we know that, that it, it is a, a responsibility of us to make sure that we don't create a problem right. for either the community or, on the, that for us. or the agency. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with uh, the chief and the sheriff, the main boss man. Okay. I'm Jose Miranda, Hispanic Speak on TV. We'll be right back. Hola Florida, introducing Boricua Beer and Taino Light Beer. Boricua and Taino Light are crafted beers that are rich in flavors and brewed right here in Florida. Taino Beer has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean flavor style when enjoyed chilled. Boricua Beer is a craft ale with full body flavor that is a beer drinker's beer. Boricua and Taino Light Beers, enjoy responsibly. Mira, ¿dónde tú estás? Ya estoy aquí, mi vida. Ay. ¿Pero qué están tomando? ¿Pero por qué? Porque me traje lo nuevo y diferente. Taino Light Boricua Beer. Y lo más importante es que es lo nuevo y acabadita de salir al mercado. ¿Y saben buenas? Claro, ambas cervezas tienen los mismos beneficios que una copa de vino. Con menos calorías. La Boricua Beer, 6%. Fuerte, pero con sabor. Y la Taino Light, 4.5%. Y es artesanal. Es Somos familia. Calidad y sabor. Visita BoricuaBeer.com 
I am for the child who's had seven addresses in a single year because she's in foster care, because her father abused her. And her mother, her mother couldn't believe her. She is the child I am for. I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Florida residents call toll-free 866-341-1425.